Hey, what's up, kids? So I just got a an interesting response to the Blackmar Gambit that I've never seen. So I thought it would be useful to go over the game quickly and then analyze to see how well I did and so on. So let me start. So I have the white pieces. This is a 10 minute rapid. It got me to 1541. So I'm exactly the same on rapid and blitz right now. Okay, so we've got a Scandi and I, re I reply with the Blackmar Gambit. I'm expecting takes. And now knight c3, and the most common move, moves here are knight f6 and bishop f5 to defend the pawn. My opponent doesn't do that. We get the move c5, and this is called the Dries counterattack. Now, what do you do from here? I could take the free pawn, but that could result in a trade of queens and loss of castling rights. So here I decide to defend my pawn with bishop e3, developing a piece. Also maybe preparing long castles at some point soon. Now the queen comes out to b6. As soon as this bishop's left its post, you see it's not guarding b2 anymore. So I now push knight to d5. This achieves a couple of things. We're hitting the queen and also threatening c7, which could win the rook as well. If Black decides to take. They don't take, they play queen a5 check, which isn't too bad. I push c3, double defends this pawn. This pawn is actually now pinned, but this is okay. I've got to be a bit careful as well that this knight is now in line with the queen and not defended. They push e6, and I retreat the knight now to f4. So at this point, I'm fairly comfortable. They develop a knight. I bring out my bishop to c4. This bishop you know, really doesn't have a great home, but I'm thinking maybe it will drop back down to b3, particularly after uh, pawn to b5. But I decide to retreat here. I don't want my bishop to get trapped in here and forced back. I don't, I'm just not, not entirely sure. And now we have knight there. And I decide to take. Now I do repair their pawns, but what I notice is we have two attackers now on this pawn. I've got the, the d4 pawn and the bishop behind it. So I take and now they push. Now here I think I, I missed something because I could have simply captured on d5 with my queen hitting the rook. And the bishop can't block, nor can the knight. So that's one thing that I notice. Um, I can't take here because queen takes with check, also forking the b-pawn. So what would you play in this position? So I just simply put my bishop on d4, kind of tying the bishop down, that dark square bishop to the defense of g7. Also, if they take here, um, I, I can just take with a pawn because the bishop would defend both. If they take and bishop takes, I could lose this pawn. But he brings his knight out instead. And here I just decide to push. Because um, now if the pawn comes down, I can block with the bishop with tempo. It, it would undefend this pawn. But also I've got ideas that maybe I can take here, threaten the knight. And he decides to trade off. And bishop takes. This is not too bad. I now give check and simply shore up my pawn. So now I'm just not worried about this, this discovered check at all. This, this pawn can't move, and I'm feeling fairly comfortable. I'm still a pawn down though, and I'm kind of behind in development. And my light squared bishop is not the happiest, but on the plus side, my opponent's lost castling rights, which is going to hamper this rook's deployment into the game. Also, I've got um, two attackers on this pawn on d5. Bishop comes out and defends, doesn't make any difference, I capture the pawn. And here, I th here I think he, he missed an opportunity because, was it at this point? This point, I think black had, um, there's a possibility, hang on. Because I noticed something about my queen being undefended. Right. 
Um, and there was there was an issue of takes, and if takes, no, it's not there. It's not at that point. I take here. Yeah, this is maybe the issue. Can bishop take there? If king takes, not really. So now he takes, I, th I think he needed to take before somewhere, but we'll see. And he just loses the bishop now. And here I just give check and win his bishop. And then he checks me, but my king's actually safe here. After knight e2, um, there's a check possible here, which he doesn't do. And now after rook f1, I'm, I'm absolutely fine. And this is just a nice bishop fork hitting the the king and the queen. Okay. Um, and so after this, they just resign. So, quick look at the review. What should I have done? If I ever see that variation again, what are the ideas? Well, let's find out. Okay, it's just running its stuff. Jumping around all over the place. Only 67 accuracy for me 1300 against 750 my opponent blundered everything so really you know 1500s blunder guys okay and this is all book and this is okay but here black has almost half a pawn edge right now what do i do okay better move as so often just pushing on this pawn's hanging um, this pawn is defended by the queen as well. Okay. And that is a blunder. Okay, I could have simply... What's it saying? I could have captured on, on here. Or, or taken the other pawn. Maybe it's knight takes e4. No. Taking there. And if queen takes here... Looks scary, but isn't. Is it bishop b5? No, it's knight d5 here. Threatening to come in, and that would be checkmate. That's a, a classic checkmating pattern when you've got an open d file. Okay, so interesting stuff. I mean, I, I don't know if I've ever seen this before. But I guess what I'm missing... So this is like a delayed... My opponent did... We were chatting as well. Um, and he's saying he plays a lot of kind of Benko, um, Benoni structures, so I, I can kind of see what he's doing here. But after that, knight f6 being the best move. Yeah, I can just develop as normal. I've, st I've got two defenders here. So it's saying knight ge2, maybe bring the knight round to here, put pressure on this pawn. Okay. So there you go. That was the Dries counterattack. Um, spicy little game, um, which I managed to convert, but uh, did not do it in the most elegant way. So there you go. So thanks to Grubzy for the game. Thanks for watching. See you later.